Welcome to Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Ben Mendez, joined by co-host, Mr. Javier Perez and Mr. Chris Ochoa. Today, we're going to talk about the oil industry and good eating. I know that's your favorite subject, right? <laughs> Can you tell? Good you think? <laughs> some, some healthy tips. But first, I want to talk about our Houston Texans. Now, you know that they let go of one of our favorite players here in Texas, yeah. here in Houston, actually. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, that's a shame. That's yeah. a shame, but I think it was a money decision. So our, our best wide receiver for the past, who knows how many years? How many? Was 2002, it? so 12 so, years. Yeah. 12 he was years? the second year of Texas he was drafted. First so. round pick, yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you what, that's a big loss for the community. Yeah. Yeah, Andre Johnson, man. He was a class act, always, you know, kept kept a uh, great work ethic here in Houston. And, you know, he deserved uh, better. Yeah, yeah. He you deserved know. better. When it came down I mean, to it, I think they could have really handled it a little bit differently. I mean, yeah. you know, but obviously they're in a di different direction from, you know, a couple years ago. Yeah. They've got a new head coach. My only concern is I hope that the Colts, which they've got enough cap space, don't go for Andre Johnson because that would be horrible facing him twice a year, man. I just hope he goes to the other division. Let him go to the NFC. Don't. I don't think, I, I'd love for him to, to end up with the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Have, have have him and Manning together? Oh, I, I, Manning. I, I would be pushing and win the Super Bowl just because of Andre. I would love for Andre to get a ring. Well, that's 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 where he needs to go. He needs to go somewhere that's a championship contender, and, and I, I sure want him to get a ring as well. The other thing that happened this past weekend, the Houston Dynamo kicked off their season. Now, it's going to be exciting. You know, there's a lot more folks that are involved in soccer, especially the little kids, and, and I see more enthusiasm for the Dynamo. You don't, you don't, I don't see like it? soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. You know no, I do, actually, I, I have been able to. I kind of get a little excited, especially during the World Cup. To, you know, it's just, it's just, Come man, on. It's just that the, it's, it's so few and far between. It's an international sport. We're behind the eight ball. We are. I mean, you look across the, the world. Yeah. Everybody plays soccer. Nobody plays football. That's you don't right. see no that's, football that's, over that's there. They ain't man enough to play football, baby. That's they why. They play soccer. That's why. Football. <laughs> well, with my limited viewing capabilities, just because I don't want to watch too much sports here and there, <laughs> I, I've got my top picks, the, the Texans, the Rockets. Heck, I don't even watch the Astros too much. I, I, I love baseball. <laughs> I do love baseball. But I tell and, you, one thing baseball. about soccer, the flop. Come on, guys. Oh, true. Uh, yeah. They get t oh. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Please. And then as soon as the stretcher gets there, they're back up. Oh, man. I'd say. Well, what best wishes, wishes to them in this season, man. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 hope, I hope the best for the. For and the, the Astros started, too. So All pitchers and catchers yeah. reported today, didn't they? No, they've been playing. They've been practicing with some folks. I, I tell you, I'm excited about the I team. I saw reported a few weeks back. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, and, and then the Rockets are doing great. So, Houston is oh. a big sports town right yes, now. Yes. Absolutely. There's, there's a lot of folks involved in the sports and. I look forward to the season. Man, I'll tell you what, man, James Harden, I'm, I'm shooting for him to, to dominate the rest of the season and, you know, catch that MVP on him. Oh, man, that'd be great. Uh, Curry is going to win that MVP. Curry is doing oh, a great man. job. I think he's going to win it. We, that's a whole other show we could talk about. <laughs> that. That's uh, sports talk. Not like there you go. Talk. Right. <laughs> All right, so let's get to our topic. We have a, a guest here. His name is Felipe Hernandez. And we're going to talk a little bit about the oil trade. As you know, Houston's boomtown for oil industry. And I'd be curious to know what's going on with the oil industry here in Houston. So thank you for coming on the no, show. No, not a problem. Uh, you know, uh, just to a little bit of my background. I, I came from Mexico in 1999. And, uh, you know, I'm originally from Mexico City. I used to work with Thomson Reuters, the, the international news firm. And I get involved, you know, since the beginning in the, in the energy industry, working a lot with Enron. You know a lot of the clients that uh, client base here in Houston. So now I'm I'm based here in Houston. You know I love I love this city, and it's unbelievable. You know what what's going on. I have seen the oil prices going up, going down. Uh, it's it's very interesting what what is happening right now in the industry. I think uh, uh, Houston is is going to be affected a little bit, but I think long term the economy will will pick up again. Uh, that's that's my feeling. That's the way I see it. Um, I see a lot of Latin American uh, people, you know, getting involved uh, in, in, in Houston. It's a very international market. Uh, we have a lot of people from Venezuela, Colombia. You know, they, they come here, they, they import, export oil, uh, gas. You know, now we're talking about uh, 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 Mexico taking gas from here. 
to run the the, uh, the electricity. So it, it's a very interesting market right now. You know, they're building pipelines. Uh, they recently did a, a bidding process for pipelines in in uh, Texas, all the way to to to, to no 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 all the way Canada to, went to uh, no 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 to to uh, Guagua, which is a region close to uh, El Paso, all the way down to uh -huh. to Mexico. And they're running all the gas. They're going to start running the gas to to run the power uh, electricity in uh, in Mexico. Wow. So this is something that never happened before. Now they're putting 100% focus on that, right? The Mexican government is, is pushing for that. Let, let's talk about prices. So. Yeah, now, just real quick, Ben. Now this is we're, we're exporting. We're exporting. The, the U.S. Uh, is exporting gas, natural uh, gas, natural gas. Yes, to Mexico, and and that, they will. That, that, that will be the the, the idea. That's they're building that those pipelines. Uh, it's happening right now, but you know the I'm infrastructure was out never out there, there, so now it is because, especially for the prices of of gas, it's it's pretty cheap, and uh, that's what the, the advantage that, uh, that Mexico is going to have. So let's talk about the prices now. I know prices have gone down significantly. Yes. Uh, so what is it right now? What's the actual average price right now for the uh, United States? Uh, for you're talking about uh, oil. Yeah. Yeah, it's around um, the latest I saw fifty dollars, wow. fifty. Okay. Yeah, and so. what was it? Let's say two years ago. I mean, la just last year was you know up more than a hundred. So it has been you know half of that uh, uh, of, of of what it costs. You know, it's it's a significant reduction in in uh, in pricing. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but there's been a lot of layoffs in the yep. oil and gas industry here in Houston. Uh, thousands of folks have been laid off. Uh, I, they laid off 9,000 employees, one of my... Uh, BP yeah, laid off some folks. Yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to see what happens to the market here in Houston as a result of those layoffs. Now, let's get back to the oil industry. So, you're, you're telling me that you're going to see an increase in, in prices. Uh, obviously, it's going to bounce back. I, I, you know, it's everything is cyclical. It, it's going to it's going to come back. Um, I, the question is when, right? Um, that's what everybody's saying. When is that going to happen? Uh, there is no magic rule. Um, I think you know it can easily happen. You know, there is a Gulf or a, 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 a fight or a, a war then you will see the increase in, in, in the need of oil, right? Uh, anything that um, supply and demand, they will play a, a significant role. It's interesting, Felipe, that you mentioned about supply and demand because it, last we had a, talked about oil and gas industry on this show. We had a, a, one of my friends from Shell, and he had brought up OPEC and mm -hmm. uh, all the other nations that aren't necessarily in OPEC and how they're still continuing to flood the market with oil. Yeah. Is that the supply and demand that you're referring to, that there's so much supply at this moment that the demand is just not there, and so that price drops? You know, obviously they found a lot of oil, you know, in Texas and also Canada, so that's, that's a significant thing because you can say now, well, the U.S. can influence the demand, right? And some analysts, they say, well, now the U.S. is controlling that, uh, you know, the next phase will be what's going to happen also in, in Latin America with, with that pricing. You know, Venezuela is having a lot of issues with with the price of oil. Um, you know, some people say they, there might be a uh, an internal fight over there, over budget. Mexico is having the same issue. I mean, if, if most of the budget that the government has is based on oil and then you reduce that by half, you know, that's, that's going to be a, a big impact. You know what the interesting thing about uh, this topic, the jobs report came out, uh, the White House released the jobs report this, this month, and this marked the 12th uh, month that 200,000 plus jobs were created in America. And it's interesting to see how there's so much job growth on one side of the spectrum when you're talking about just jobs in general, and then you have the layoffs happening in the oil and gas industry. Specifically, it's affected Houston as well. In Houston, again, like Ben mentioned, to his point, is is a key critical point in oil and gas production, upstream, downstream, midstream. So I just can you comment a little bit about you know how is it that perhaps the there's jobs keep continuing to you know the jobs are continuing to grow in in America, and the gas, the oil and gas industry is suffering so much. Is is it purely supply and demand? Is that what it's affecting, or you know, what other mm. are there any other indications on why that's the case? Uh, you know, there is specific projects that you know, like in Mexico, there is exploration for deep sea water, right? And and 
and uh, when the price of oil is you know higher than seventy dollars a barrel, you know people and the companies are willing to invest because they will make a profit. But when the price is not there, you know companies tend to wait and say, okay, do we invest here? Do we not? Um, you know, like two years ago, they were saying, hey, there is going to be a lot of LNG plants built in the Gulf Coast. And, you know, there is going to be labor demand. There is, you know, if you don't have the workers ready for, for that, the welders, every, everybody that is involved in, in, in those construction for these um, LNG plants, uh, you're going to be missing the boat. And so people are start fighting for keeping their workers happy, keeping that. And now you can see that those projects, maybe they have been on hold. And then now there is, you know, there's going to be uh, people that are going to be free. So, it, it, you know, the dynamics change so much on the pricing. But I think eventually it will come back. Uh, Houston has been blessed, I will say that, you know, by, by their people, by the oil, um, you know, having the best, the best uh, connections through, through, through um, Latin America. You know, it's, it's the center of, of really connecting to South America and, and even to Europe. So I think, you know, it, it's something that will come back for sure. So, so you're telling us that the, the, the job, uh, uh, the layoffs are having now is kind of a temp temporal shift? I, I, I think, yeah, of projects that are being placed on hold and eventually they will, they will come back. Uh, you know, there's also an advantage when, when gas, you know, we're talking gas is, is going low, it's, it's being really cheap. Well, you know, power companies are going to say, like in Mexico, it's like, I need to build a pipeline. I'm going to go and build a pipeline and, and take as much gas I can to Mexico. So once, you know, maybe on the oil business, it will, it will close down. There are other sides of the energy industry that it will be open. One thing that I learned this recently, you know, the cartel makes more money on oil and gas than they do on drugs. <laughs> they, wow. they steal oil uh, from Pemex. Yes. They tap into the pipelines what? in Mexico. Yes, exactly. They tap into the pipelines, and they collect this oil or gas. I'm, I'm not sure which, which it one it is. It can be oil, yeah. Okay. A and they sell it wow. in the black market. They, but you know, they sell it, rate. They sell it, and they pass the oil. There was a big case that they sold it, that in the, in the U.S. And it was, it was pretty amazing how, how that transaction could be happening. That's incredible. So energy reform in Mexico basically is what we need to talk about. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of things that go into the cartel siphoning this oil out. I'm just wondering if someone's being paid behind the scenes to let it happen because if you have so much oil being stolen from the government, Pemex is run by the government, uh, there's somebody that has to know, right? And so just imagine how much money is going to someone's pockets uh, because of this. Yeah, and, and that, that's another topic altogether. Absolutely. Now, now, how is this? At, how are they siphoning the soil off? They're like they, they tap pipeline? into the lines. They yeah, there has the been lines. explosions. So they got the and stick it in and <laughs> okay, here no, we go. We're talking about some major <laughs> pipelines that there, are tapping into that. I mean, how can it just amazes me how that can happen? And that that's a you know big topic in the energy reform. That when I go to different events, they say, "Hey, so what about security? You know, we're gonna bring, you know, all my investment here, but who is gonna secure that?" You know the cartel is not going to damage whatever I invest. I mean, it's 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 something that is it's for sure out there. So you know, smart companies will go to secure places in Mexico. Maybe the north is not that secure, so they're going to go to the south that is is going to be more more secure. Isn't that incredible? That that is that's amazing. How, how you know that that could be happening this day and age, technology and everything. I mean, it's somebody has to be turning the other. Yeah. You know turn a blind eye to it. So they steal a billion dollars worth of oil a year. Mm. A what? billion with a B. That's yeah, that, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just curious, how does that affect the trade with oil for Mexico? Obviously, they have a loss, right? Because yeah. of yeah. all the gas or oil being <coughs> sold by the cartel. But how does that affect everything I mean, it, it affects Pemex, right, which is the big oil company. So mm. I know they're as part of the reform. They're putting, they're trying to to watch on those those items. You know, uh, making sure that you know there is no stealing, uh, making sure that everything is in order. But you know, it's like uh, it, it's sad to say, but corruption in Mexico is still there. And I know the president is trying to make changes. You know, it's it's, it's a matter of waiting and see how many changes he, he he's going to be able to perform. 
You know, when you talk about reform, I think about bills and laws, you know, bills being passed to become laws, and you just hit the nail on the head, Felipe, about the president wanting to do this and urging their form of government to, I'm assuming, to create these bills and enforce these laws. But then you mentioned the corruption aspect of it. How, I mean, uh, is it safe to say that 50% or more are pro good <laughs> and you know the rest i mean what what is that corruption what level of corruption is that and it's hard know. to tell it's hard to, yeah. to tell you know and, and it's sad because he's not only mexico if you know i was reading some stories about um, brazil too like petrobras right now is yep. in yep. in a lot of trouble especially for corruption and i really? think it's it's even worse than than uh, than pemex wow um you know their uh, petrobras is going to start selling their assets you know a lot of money uh, they bought a refinery here and there's, you know, there is speculation that they bought it for a lot of money, that they shouldn't be spending the money because it was not even making money. Um, so it, it, it's typical, you know, and it's sad maybe in our countries that, that that's, that's what it is, you know. And I think eventually we'll get better um, applying and, and being more open. That's what Mexico is trying to be more open to, to the international companies, to have the rules clear. Um, that's something that never was there because it was always government-owned company. So I think with all these changes, they have to have it open. Otherwise, no one is going to go invest there. Sure. So how does that affect the consumer at the end of the day? Uh, Prices go up, right? So yep. Because you have less supply because of everything that's going on behind the scenes. The prices go up. So worldwide, it affects everybody. It is, you know, but in, in the U.S., you know, you can see with the gas, right? If mm -hmm. if If oil goes down then gas goes down you know so it's very supply and demand operates very well in some of the countries in latin america it doesn't work that way you know the government still puts the pricing into the gas so hey why are we getting this gas too expensive well it, you know it's the, the government set up that those are the things that are going to start changing um going forward so like in venezuela obviously the president has a big say so <coughs> as to the price of, of yes. gas, right? So uh, are you saying that the because there, there's a lot of oil and gas product in Venezuela, that regardless, the president will s dictate the price? Yes, well. Even if there's a lot of quantity, he can still raise that price. Venezuela is a special case. Uh, right. I can tell you with the gas, the, the gasoline is, for example, it doesn't matter, it's cheap, it's, it's, it's really nothing. I mean, I heard the other day, and I have been in Venezuela, that, for example, filling up a, a car with gas might be cheaper than going to McDonald's and buy a hamburger. The entire car, like $5, $7, that would be the equivalent of filling up your car or cheaper that than about that. about the quality of gas that you're getting? Is it still the same quality, apples to apples, compared to America? I don't think it's the same, but, you know, for, for the cars that they have, you know, it works fine. Um, um, but, you know, that can tell you, you know, that's how the government managed that, that to keep the people maybe happy, uh, make sure that there is, you know, you know, they give some benefits. But over there, obviously, there is no supply and demand, uh, especially on the oil that is open, right? So let's talk about your job. Uh, you've been involved with trade for, for a while. Yeah. yeah I, so I, how, how does that work on a global market? So let, let's just say I want to invest. Mm -hmm. let, let's say... Uh, you have 100, 100 people that would like to invest in certain trading, and they're going to take a risk. So if you if you invest and you're, the, the gas price goes up, then you get a big return. Is that yes. how that works? Uh, yeah, it obviously works like that. Uh, okay. There are companies like hedge funds. What they do is they manage different funds, right? So there might be a hedge fund um, with specific uh, energy companies, right, and, and focus on the energy space. Uh, so that will work that way, you know, if, if oil, you know, goes up, then returns are higher on these companies, and then obviously you, you get a higher return on that. Okay, um, and so do you have to wait a certain time period to get your money for your profit, or, or uh, is it like a time limit? You say you have to invest for a year, or can you invest for one month and watch the prices go up and take your money out? It, it depends how risky you want to have, you know. I, I know people that they will, they will risk, uh, you know, you can do day trading, right so minutes trading you know you can trade all your all this amount but you're risking a lot um, but you can have a long-term strategy or you know one month one year it depends how how, how you want to handle your risk Felipe <clears throat> you mentioned that you were involved in news prior yes. to being in the oil and gas industry mm -hmm. what, what exactly is your role currently 
And uh, well, I, I'm working right now for Argos, which is a, a news uh, agency. Uh, we provide um, information for the market. Uh, Argos, uh, what they do is they publish the pricing for each location. Uh, for example, uh, West Texas. So they will set up the price uh, with different um, um, uh, methodology. And then with that methodology, companies normally use the pricing uh, in their contracts. So let's say if there is a trade between you know, uh, company A and company B, they will say, okay, we're gonna close that deal according to Argus or according to other agencies. Uh, Argus is one of the most, you know, there are like two or three rem key uh, companies that they publish daily, their daily like their Platts, prices. for example. They yeah, Platts will be another daily one. Daily exactly. publishing. Yes, so they do that for gas, power, um, electricity, well, uh, gas, power, crude, uh, natural petrochemical, gas. natural gas, uh, and th that's the way they set up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an open way of saying, okay, this is, this is my book, this is the pricing. Sounds like the NFL needs something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Their yeah, prices go off the charts. Yeah, well, we do. It's called Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. You got your odds. <laughs> yeah, Who's going to win? So, Felipe, so what's the, what's your prognosis for the next couple of years in, in the oil industry? You think it's going to come back so, sooner so, than later? Make him sound like a doctor. Well, man, that's, he is. He's the doctor of oil. I can tell you it's going to come back. I oh, think yeah. I think Houston. You can see the construction in Houston. It's unbelievable, especially you know close to Midtown, on this area. I, I think the investment is there. These companies, you know, the Shell, the BP, the Exxon, they're he here to invest and invest well. Exxon recently just announced that they're moving to their their headquarters to Woodland. to Houston, in in the Woodlands. I saw them leaving when they decided hey, we're going to go to Fairfax, and then they say no, we're coming back, and and you know they're moving a lot of people. So, if you see pricing right now of houses, it, it's it's crazy. I put my house for sale recently. Uh, I had it as an investment, and I sold the house in two days. Two days. Wow. It's unbelievable. I mean, it is it, just crazy. I I thought it was going to take some time, and. And in two days, got sold. Was it located near that campus? Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. located uh, north north of Houston, so it's it's close close over there. Yeah. And this is their global headquarters, correct? This yes. is where they're going to set up. They're going to set up the, their their global headquarters. So yes. you're going to have the best and the brightest come into exactly. near Houston, yep. and and they're going to offer up their you know money into the economy, and yep. it's going to yep. be great for Houston. It really uh, is. Let's talk about getting into your industry because there's a lot of folks that are interested in the oil and gas trading specifically but they don't know how to get into the industry. So how did you start? Did you, I'm assuming you went for school, you went to school for something like this and, and then you kind of went into the, the job field or how did that work? Oh, my career, how, how did I start? Yes. Um, I, you know, I was lucky to be in an exchange program with NAFTA. Uh, okay. You started my career in my, my college in, in Mexico, but then I got transferred to Canada, Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is far away. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did my bachelor in commerce, then I went back to Mexico and I did an MBA on, um, uh, you know, with one of the best universities there. But uh, my real career started, you know, just getting close to the to the people, you know, uh, at the right moment. Uh, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to be in, in something different. I started in Reuters because it was news, uh, real time news, getting the news. You know, but something I learned with Reuters is that the news, they really move the market. They... Um, you know, there might be a story that just gets like that and, you know, moves the market and people were willing to pay, you know, a lot of money just to get th that news right away, you know, when it happens. Um, so looking at that, you know, then I, I got to Houston and, you know, Houston is really energy. Uh, working a lot with, with Enron, uh, I saw Enron going up, Enron going down. Uh, Enron wanted to hire me. I, I was one of the lucky ones that I say, no, I'm not going there. I can be a contractor still for Reuters. But, uh, but uh, let me see if I like the environment at Enron. And Enron was fantastic. I mean, they have really smart people, people from MIT, Yale, Harvard, uh, one of the best, best people there. And, and you can see that even though Enron went down, those people ended up in really good companies. Uh, they, they people, they, there were people that they just hired from the expertise from Enron saying, hey, we don't want an Enron here, so let's, let's move, move you here and tell us what do we need to do so we're not going to be like that? <laughs> yeah. uh, so that was that was fantastic, and and I, I have a lot of friends through that, you know, um, in the industry. So how many years altogether are, have you been in the industry? Um, like 14, 14, 14 years, 15 okay. years, yes. So you're a veteran. Uh, I I I don't like thinking like that, but you know, it's, you're an old man. It, it's sad. <laughs> you, you know, the the sad thing is now when I go to the trading floors, I start seeing oh these these people look like kids. 
you know, and, and I was like, oh, maybe I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, obviously some people do very well in doing these trades, right? They, yes, they get yes. bonuses and the whole bit. Uh, I know some folks that are in the $300,000 range. That, that's pretty yeah. significant when you're talking about someone that recently graduated from college. Yeah, yeah. If you are right with the right people, with the right expertise, you know, you start learning. I mean, a trading guy, uh, someone that works in trading, you know, those those bonuses are, are very, very, very good. And sometimes they even get paid much better than the the, the CEO of the company. Do you need an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. If, if I will put an assistant, that will be my 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 uh, daughter. <laughs> we're, we're trying to find a job for Javier. He doesn't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to stay home and collect his wife's paycheck. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I appreciate you coming. No, out not a problem. I knowledge. really, no, I really enjoyed your show, and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, people will in in Latin America, you know, the Latin people here, they acknowledge, you know, their opportunities in the energy field. Um, so, what what advice, real quick, Felipe? What advice would you give give uh, 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 Latinos right now that uh, I want to invest in the industry? Well. I think the best, go, go, the best advice, advice I, I can tell you is that you need to start speaking Spanish too. There you go. <laughs> you know, because something that I learned here was, um, and that's because, you know, of the situation in the U.S. Uh, back then, but a lot of people there, they grew up here, they came from Latin American families, and they forget about the Spanish. And I'm having that with, with my son and my daughter, and it's sad. I think they really need, you know, there is American people that I have talked, and they speak better Spanish than right. some some other people, and that's very impressive. That, that's yeah. a total you know, Felipe, different when, topic. When <laughs> when when I, when I go up and I hear people speak in French, well, in Houston, you know, you'll hear French, you know, whatever language. I said, hey, 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 this is America. Speak Spanish. Hey, that's, <laughs> right. that's right. That is right. <laughs> All right. With that said, uh, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Miss Rita Farias and Araceli Zapata, and we're going to talk about good eating. Good. All right. Just for right. back in right. minutes. Latino Talk TV. I'm your host, Ben Mendez, and again, joined by Mr. Javier Perez and Chris Ochoa. 
And now we have two special guests. We have Miss Rita Farias. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here. And Araceli Zapata. Thank Glad you for to coming. Be here. So we're going to talk about some good eating. Now Rita has some great ideas. Um, if you have a low budget, you can still eat good, right, Rita? Right, right. Now, did you bring any samples? <laughs> <clears throat> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get right to it, Rita. So you represent which group? American Latino Center for Research, Education, and Justice. And I'm the executive director of this organization. And um, I go out into the community and teach people how to eat healthy and nutritious food on a budget. And just for the record, she's married to an icon from the East End, Mr. Richard Farias. So tell Richard I said hello. I'll tell him he said hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, getting back to your group, uh, I, I know that you give a, a lot of folks information. We do. And how to budget their meals, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can have a meal for five bucks for the whole four family. People. For four people. Right. That, that doesn't include you. You have, what, six in your family? Yeah, they're sick. Six in the family. They, they, they aren't shy eaters, that's for so sure. So you need $10. <laughs> Still, that's a bargain, though, Ben. <laughs> so let's talk about that. So five bucks, I mean, I can just imagine. I'm just going to guess, okay? Okay. So maybe some rice, uh, maybe some beans, uh, a salad. Am I close? You're close, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what is that, about four bucks? Yeah, about $4. Four, four bucks, and then maybe a little dessert. I don't know. I'm asking. Uh huh. Well, let me tell you about it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we go into the community and we do what they're called charlas, which is a community discussion. And we teach them how to read labels, how to count calories, uh, what to look for in um, the meal. So we want them to go out there and get some protein, a grain, and a fruit and a vegetable. So that's what the plate consists of. So as a matter of fact, I'm doing one tomorrow. It's called a charla. And then what I do is with this group, I'll take them to the grocery store. And I'll pay for their groceries. And it's more lessons learned. So I tell them, go out there and get protein, a grain, a, a green, and a fruit. And so it's like the plate. And we show them the plate. The plate is not this big, but it's like this big, you know, and we teach them the portions. So last year I took um, someone out, and I have it on our website. She bought some um, leg quarters because they were on sale. We teach them to look for the things that are on sale, to buy fruits and vegetables that are on sale in season and what to buy. So she grilled these and she bought some greens and uh, she had leg quarters, greens. She bought some peaches and she uh, sauteed them with cinnamon and a little bit of butter. So that was her fruit. And then she had some brown rice. So that was a full meal and I think she paid 487 for this entire meal and it's for a family of four. So it can be done. Uh, I was surprised myself when I first started teaching because you go to Starbucks and buy Sure. a latte for close to five dollars yep. and but it really can be done and we also teach them about the health issues the reason it's we go out there is because latinos face so many health issues you know diabetes and and so we can try to reverse that and we do cooking demonstrations too but i didn't bring any food that is awesome so that that's really it really piques my interest when you say 487 she's paid how many leg quarters did she buy she bought uh, i think it was two leg quarters but remember we're supposed to eat like meat the size of our palm. So, you know, she had a thigh and, and a drumstick. So that was for four people. So we're not supposed to eat as much as we do. And a lot of times, like I did when I did my shopping, I did more of a vegetarian. And I do vegetarian uh, cooking when I go to the community centers. I make vegetarian tacos with black beans. Uh, I saute onions, tomatoes, garlic, gominos, black beans, some corn. Rotel tomatoes, and so we put them on uh, the corn tortillas. You can have two little corn tortillas for a meal, and they're not that many calories. We put them on there, and we put uh, lettuce and cabbage and avocados, and they're really yummy. We did some at a community center, and even the policemen there were coming and taking pictures of the recipe because they really liked it. It's really delicious, and I fed it to Richard, too. He liked it. Rita, that's, that's super awesome. What, what was your motivation to want to wanna do something like this for you? Well, <clears throat> I have health issues, and I know that we are what we eat. And so a lot of times, like, a lot of heavy meat is so bad for us. I have arthritis. I have RA. So if I eat a lot of heavy meat, it'll throw me into a flare-up. So we need to watch what we eat and then, you know, and then also watching the community around me. I'm lucky I don't have diabetes or high blood pressure, but almost everybody I know has it, has some form of it. And so in order to 
you know, better address. And we work a lot with families. So we work with children so they can be active and bright when they go to school. We teach the parents what to feed them. Like the Cheerios are full of, you know, or the certain cereals are full of sugars oh, yes. and, and what to do is just to help a better lifestyle. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned RA. Uh, one of my, uh, one of Rita's, my wife's Rita's um, friends from mm -hmm. back in the valley uh, was told at a very young age, I want to say middle 20s, mm -hmm. that um, he was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh -huh. And the doctor mm -hmm. had told him that he wasn't going to be able to walk past 30. And mm -hmm. so it was a huge, it had a huge effect on him. And he started doing a lot of nutritional research. Mm -hmm. And he uh, really cut out a lot of the eating that was, was unhealthy for him. Um, completely organic and he started working on his body eating correctly mm -hmm. and man he had a huge story that came out last year or last season in NBC's American Ninja Warrior Wow um, he is a, he was a finalist and mm -hmm. uh, he went to Dallas he had a walk on he was a walk on he uh -huh. waited five days to just try the course he had submitted his tape but they didn't the producers of the show didn't uh, select him so he walked on spent five days out in Dallas mm -hmm. he completed the first course completed the second course and then he went to Vegas and he he was on the finals in, in Vegas awesome. but he you know one thing about that was he a lot of people with RA were hitting him up on social media saying man you know what you're an inspiration because mm -hmm. I mean it's devastating RA. it is it is I've had it for about 20 years and there's times that I mean, I've attended events where I have to go get in the car. I mean, it doesn't go away, and it's, it's not a cure for it. But if you eat properly, you can have a better quality of life. And him being so young, I just, um, I really commend that because we have to watch what we eat. We are what we eat, you know. Absolutely. So that's great. That's good. He should be. Write a story or something. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I told, I've told him about the show. Want him to come on. Yes. If he ever has an opportunity to come on, I'd love for you to come on oh, as well. Just yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, well it has changed why, my... That's why I look like a pork chop, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop eating. You got to stop eating. Uh, I, I will tell you that uh, it's hard for me to stay away from the tortillas, especially when I go to my, my grandparents or, sure. or my aunts Comfort and food. uncles. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't stay away from all the bad stuff, so to speak. Uh, and it's an, I guess it's an ingrained in our culture, you know. Yeah. The tortillas are the worst. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things that we could eat that could improve our health. Uh -huh. Now, I will tell you, when you go to these seminars, when you talk to these uh -huh. elderly folks that are so used to eating our cultural foods, how do they <clears throat> respond? Well, at first, they're like, uh, you know, I'm still going to eat my tortillas. And uh -huh. you say, yes, you can eat tortillas. You can't go cold turkey. I eat tortillas every now and then. Mm -hmm. But the fact is not eat them as often or not eat them as much. We did a cooking demonstration at Nueva Vida, a bunch of seniors there, and yeah, they're set the in their ways big time. And I had my son go in there. He does, he's in culinary, uh, that's his art. And so he did the uh, portobello mushrooms and he sauteed them and he did the onion separate and the bell pepper separate. And then he made a mango sauce with salsa. It was so, so good. So anyway, we gave them to the seniors and we had some black beans too. They ate them. Uh, they all ate them. Only one person that was watching him cook wouldn't eat because he knew it was a portobello mushrooms. Some of them thought they were fajitas. Some of them thought really? because it tasted so good, you know, that they really they wanted the, uh, you know, recipe. So there's a misconception that we can only eat good eating the tortillas and the rice and the beans. And we can't. Beans are good for us. Protein. Rice is good. We try to change it to brown because it's uh, better for us. And tortillas, it's OK. Just don't eat you know, every day or right. two, and you know, just, you know, moderation. That brings us to our next topic with Ms. Araceli. Uh, so we were talking about a community garden. Right. Now, growing your own fruits and vegetables, exactly. I'm assuming, is what we're talking about. Right. Now, you, you have this vision that you want to start a nonprofit that helps people learn how to do this? Yeah, I really think it's important, like Rita was saying, to educate people um, to eat healthy, especially nowadays because there's so much processed stuff. Mm. Out in the store, you know, going out to the grocery store, you see what I call food-like products. You know, they're, they're all in boxes and packages and stuff like that. And they're easy to grab, they're easy to prepare, but, and I think that's um, living a busy life here in a big city like we do and just kind of go out and 
get stuff that's really not good for us. So my idea, my vision is to start a community garden and um, show people how to grow their own stuff. And it's fun, it's an activity that they can do. And with the family, you know, with the older people, it's, it's something that we can start as a community and then they can take home and, and you know, do their little garden in their backyard or anything like that. Um, nowadays, you know, the production of food is really a high in demand, so um, companies have started, or farmers rather, have started using um, genetically modified seeds, which, you know, they have a purpose, but they're not very good for us. All these um, fruits and vegetables that are being grown in that manner um, actually affect our health, and the reason for that is to have a mass production of food and stuff like that. So if, if we can take, like, one community garden at a time and, and just for the people who really want to watch their health. I mean, I've had people tell me I'm going to die of something. I might as well enjoy myself, but sure. why suffer? You know, why get the cancer or the tumors or things like that when we can go back to a more natural way and stay healthier for longer? Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about how a community garden works for those that aren't sure? Well, I'm in the beginning stages of actually getting it together, but um, I would like to have um, like a box garden, have several different boxes and um, grow produce from there and basically um, get uh, like staple vegetables that we use in our Latino cooking, like tomatoes, chiles, cebollas, you know, herbs and uh, like cilantro and stuff like that. But those would work really well in, in boxes. When you say in boxes, are, we, a, are we talking about in your yard or like no, a community uh, garden? Will, yes, a community garden okay. would consist of a, a community area, maybe a city-owned like city city-owned property, a park or something like that, where we can actually invite people in the community to come and help us grow these um I'll make you a deal. You can use my backyard as long as you cut the front yard in the front. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm looking at it in a, in a way that um, we can have a, a pretty significant size, but at the same time, you know, have different activities to have people out there. I mean, that's my vision, but if it works out well, then, you know, we will grow a lot of stuff and share it with the community, maybe donate it to the Houston Food Bank or things like that, you know. Or to us. Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. You have yeah, space over there? That. You have space yeah. over there? You can yeah. use the roof, right? You can, you, <laughs> you can grow stuff on the roof. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're talking about doing that in the in the park right behind Talento Bilingue. Oh, they're really? Oh, that's they're great. Gonna, yeah, they're going to have like a, a community garden mm, there. That would be or, Not a community, well, a community market is what it is, where a they're going to have, have people sell. That's, that's not the same thing. Like people well, yeah, bring their they food out. Bring it in, yeah. They're bring having one in. April, the beginning of April, there's going to be one on navigation, the first farmer's market, and I inquired about it. Yeah. So I'll be participating in that, but they are looking for farmers. Well, where exactly on navigation? Uh, just on the navigation strip. Okay. And it's, uh, and it's a, yeah, and it's a farmer's market, which is good because there's in other communities like Rice and, and uh, the Heights and all that. So that's going to be a farmer's, the farmers are going to be bringing their produce there. Interesting. I hadn't heard that before. Yeah, I just found out about it last night. So getting back to your group, uh, have you started your nonprofit paperwork? Um, no, I need to register. The important thing is that I do have the people who are backing me up as far as, you know, supporting my idea and working with me. Obviously, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of dedication um, to get it started. So I'm needing, I'm reaching out and actually wanting funding and stuff like that, you know, just... Well, the expert going. for nonprofits is her husband. Awesome. Yes. I'll get he with is. you. He, he, he can is. tell you how to quickly do your paperwork. I'm not going to say the IRS is going to return the paperwork quickly, well, but I'm he can do it quickly for you on this that. end. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, when you don't know anything about this stuff, it takes a little bit of research and time to get it together. Well, don't do it the wrong way. Make sure you get some <laughs> assistance. I'm yeah. serious. Well, very fortunate. Yes, I would like some assistance, some, some guidance in starting the legal part of it. Because I think the growing part, I, I, you know, there's people that know how to grow the stuff that I know and they're willing to come on board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to take you know, time. Let, let, let me ask you, what, what do you say to the people who say, well, you know, uh, I want to buy organic or I want to buy right. it, but it's too expensive? Well, you know what? There's People don't always have to buy organic. That's what my 
sisters live in California, so everything's whole food, organics. It can be expensive. There's certain things that you should buy organic, like strawberries, because they have more pesticides on them. Mm -hmm. But there's certain things that are okay, like tomatoes. Avocados. And avocados. Yeah, there's a lot of vegetables that we can buy. A lot of organic is kind of like a fancy name sometimes, um, but there are a lot of fruits and vegetables that they can buy. The reason why avocados you don't necessarily have to buy organic is because of the hard uh, coating or the shell that they come in so mm -hmm. they even though there's pesticides that are put on there for growth purposes the the hardness of that outer portion of that avocado will shield you from that so yeah, we don't true. buy organic avocados but we do buy and it is expensive we do buy organics mm -hmm. and it's you know it's an investment it's it's like Rita always says she says it's better to buy now even though it's expensive and pay for these organics then pay for the medical right. bills that you're going to be exactly. paying for right. later on. And that's what our, our families tell us a lot. Well, I can't afford to go out there and buy organic. And, you know, we even tell them you can buy frozen a lot of times when it's not in season because you're still getting the vitamins that you need, you know. And we also tell them about the cans. They have a lot of sodium. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but we still need fruits and vegetables. And a lot of our Latino families don't eat fruits and vegetables. I was surprised when I would go out there because it's rice and beans and tortillas and you know, gravies and chiles. So it's not, you don't always have to buy organic, just like strawberries, yeah, you know, certain things like that. I think if you cut back on the junk food and then you invest it into the better food, that, that can balance out too, like chips and cookies and yeah. ice creams and all this stuff that's really not good, just. You, you know, you well, mentioned. You know, I, I buy organic Oreos. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't I know they had do. organic Oreos. <laughs> that I don't. Good. You had mentioned earlier uh, the Cheerios. Uh -huh. Now, cereal obviously has a lot of sugar. It's a lot and, of sugar. And so uh, it's kind of hard to determine which ones to really purchase for a child. Okay, don't buy the ones that are on the outside aisles because the, uh, the people that are selling it put it on the outside aisles for a reason. The one, the kids will see on the commercial, oh, and it's got this toy in there and it's got, you know, special K. So a parent should read the labels. And if it has a bunch of ingredients that you can't even read the names, they're bad, bad for you. Mm -hmm. But there are some that are really good for you. You know, like, like Cheerios, you said, and what else? Uh, no, Cheerios is okay. I just okay. mentioned Cheerios. But like even the Honey Nut Cheerios, because they have more sugar. You know, so just look at them like my granddaughters, when they visit me from California, there's certain cereals they eat. I think it's Barbara or a brand like that that we get at Sprouts or Whole Foods. And they're not outrageous, but they have more nutrition because some of the cereals, I mean, we're giving our children cereal before they go to school, loading them up with sugar, mm -hmm. and then two hours later they're falling asleep, and the parent is thinking they're doing, you know, what advertised on TV that it's got like vitamins, this and this, but if you look on the back and you compare it to another box, it's just all advertisement. We teach them how to... Rita, what, what about like, I, I know like in the, the, the cereals as far as, uh, you know, I, I try to read a lot of labels, and a lot of times they'll get like the multigrain. Like they they sell uh -huh. a multigrain Cheerio, uh -huh. which I thought was better and it was less sugar. Right. What about things like that? Yeah, they're good that, for you too, but, but don't be uh, deceived by, because a lot of times they'll say multigrain or low fat, low fiber. Well, if they're saying that, it's like it's like me saying, oh, look at me, look at me, you know, instead of looking at the what I've done or whatever. So they're trying, the advertisers are getting your eye by that low fat or, you know, but read that label and then read one that might be next to it. It might even be a store brand that you can save money on that. So be careful when it, you know, it advertises. But anytime it's grains, it's much better for you. Well, you asked the question on what other cereals. I read an article uh, just along the same lines. It was like the 10 worst cereals to feed your children. Um, Cocoa Puffs was one of mm -hmm. those that was on there. Uh, Kellogg's Fruit Loops. Which, oh, yeah. man, that, that was a blow Apple because I, I love Fruit Loops growing up. Tutti Fruities. Um, mm -hmm. The Fruity anything, Pebbles? Fruity Pebbles, yeah. That's uh, my favorite. Frosted Flakes. <laughs> I mean, these are like yeah. household the top. cereals yeah. that, that you just, you know that you, you grew up to love, man. But, you know, ultimately they're packed with different things that just you can't pronounce. It's mm -hmm. modified to, to have a longer lasting shelf life. It's, uh, there's a bunch of sugar in there. And, you know, the thing that they also gave you what was in it, but also the effects of it. And a lot of those cereals were linked to um, autism, uh, just mm -hmm. different things, ADHD. Uh -huh. um, yeah, a lot, a lot of things that aren't good for you. Let's talk about tortillas. Now, they have a big 
wheat push right now, wheat mm -hmm. tortillas. Uh, is that really good for you like they say it is? It, it's probably better than flour, but corn tortillas are good too. And people think that they're not, you know. But um, yeah, wheat tortillas are probably better than flour tortillas. But I like flour tortillas. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'll eat, like today I had lunch and I had a flour tortilla. But I eat one. I don't eat, you know, two or three with yeah. a lot of butter and stuff. I try to mix them up. So I'll get uh -huh. like maybe one flour and two corn or something like that yeah. just so I don't eat the same thing yeah. in one meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't but be laughing. you can still eat them. But you can still eat them. I've I mean, never seen you eat just can't... one flour tortilla bed. Okay, I don't three. Know what the hell you're about. <laughs> if I were to go in there and tell the families, you can't have tortillas, you can't have this, you can't have that, they would just shut me down. Yeah. Yeah. But when I when we do the, the cooking demonstrations and the chatlas, it's supposed to last an hour. They won't let us leave. They'll have us there for a long time. So, so I guess a big part of it is cooking fresh, right? Yep, yeah. cooking, cooking fresh. Cooking your fresh uh, frijoles, mm -hmm. uh, 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 fresh vegetables. Right. It's also cheaper, right? It is, yeah. Cheaper. Now remember, meat size is only this size, Javier. <laughs> not, not like this. <laughs> yeah. This size, That's meat what we size. Should have. Well, man can have a little bit more, but yeah. And no, don't tell them that. <laughs> families think, well, I have five dollars. I can go get five burgers or a dollar a piece, and you know we have everything that we need one meal. But it, it's so bad for them, and they can get five dollars and go buy like a pack of rice. They still have rice left for the next meal, and they'll have you know things. So, like do that. you feed Richard, or I, does he make his own meals? Oh no, I cook for him. Yeah. So, does he eat the the meat this size, like yeah, you're telling he us? Does. I gotta see that. Richard eats pretty healthy, actually. Yeah, uh -huh. I gotta see that. You know, you haven't had lunch with him though. Rita. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. That's probably that's <laughs> probably why. Give me that. No. That's probably why he does. He's not hungry for give dinner, and he'll say, "Yeah, I have a little that piece." Mole, Richard. Give me the mole. <laughs> oh man, I tell you what. You think it's a hard transition to 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 just switch to a healthy lifestyle, healthier eating lifestyle, but it really isn't. You yeah. you kind of start feeling good and take pride in what you're uh -huh. eating, whereas before. I would eat whatever, and man, I, I don't know if you guys Sluggish. noticed, but I'm slimming down a little bit. You have. <laughs> looking for, looking forward to Daytona Beach this next week oh, coming this up. Yeah. <laughs> but no, honestly, seriously, um, I'm thankful that Rita cooks for me, and she, we've got this pressure. Not this cooker. Rita, by not the way. That, not no. that Rita, my wife. His my wife, wife. Yeah. Rita. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad now when I eat. I'm gonna go have Rita wings. cook me something. Then. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> Rita doing all this cooking. All the well, all the healthy eating that I've I've eaten, and, and it's you know been about two three months now. But if I were to cheat or, or do like a cheat meal, like they uh -huh. say, and eat something like pizza or or wings, man, I I feel it in my body, and that's your body. A lot of a yeah. lot of people tend not to hear the their body the signs yeah. that their body is telling them hey when this isn't good for you. when when your stomach is hurting it might be because you've been eating dairy and we aren't naturally supposed to eat dairy any, you know after mm -hmm. birth but uh yeah it's it's really good stuff yeah, it's a lot of interesting he, things he brings up a good point because they always say have a cheat one day uh if you're on a diet so I, i've never really understood that maybe you can enlighten me because mm. uh, let's say i eat salads and whatever else for six days and that one day, I'm going to go eat some menudo or whatever it might be. I mean, so how do you feel about those cheat days? I think it's okay. I think it's all in moderation. You know, even daily, if you eat something that you, you know, that's not, but as long as you balance it out, it's all in moderation. I like, you know, on the weekends, like certain things too. But I, I can tell you, like Chris, I've lost weight just doing this program. I lost two dress sizes just doing this program and over a year ago because now I feel guiltier. You know, when I'm going to pick that up, I'm like, ooh, if somebody were to see me eating this that I'm doing chatlas for, you know? And so, <laughs> yeah, big pan de dulce, invest in yourself, invest uh -huh, in your body, yeah. you know. And, and then, and I'm learning more because they're teaching me too. You know, they're talking about the aceite and what they do at home, and we teach each other. That's another good point. Uh, the you know, oils they they use exactly. Now, mm -hmm. Is, is there a particular oil that's better than others? I, I like to use coconut oil, and a lot of people use oh, yes. coconut oil. Yes. But, um, and then also, too, butter instead of margarine. Margarine is the worst thing for you. And people think, well, I'll eat margarine because it's, you know, less calories or whatever. It is so bad for you. So we teach, you know, if you can eat butter, eat real butter. Real but butter. don't eat as much. Use coconut oil or use uh, sunflower oil or use, you know, just change your oils so that you're eating better. Coconut oil, I hear, is the best oil. And there's certain brands of co coconut oil mm -hmm. that are 
better than others. And mm -hmm. when I say better, I mean you don't taste the coconut. And and it took us a couple of times to find that oil. But I mean, it, it's just it looks like you know manteca. Yeah, really, it, does. it does. It looks you like oil. Put it in the pan, I making some it. eggs, uh -huh. and it melts like like manteca. And it's really good. It's really good. It's got yeah. a lot of benefits. You can't taste it, and, and mm -hmm. it's a healthier option for you. Uh, to Rita's point, um, the the uh, butter that the margarine, uh -huh. the, she's bringing up a really good point. Same thing with sweet and lows. You know, they they advertise, or even I can't believe it's not butter. They advertise zero calories. Well, that's because what is going into your body can't be um, broken down. So it, it and it's just there in your body, and that's that's key when you look at the cells and cancer happening. So, you know, the sweet and lows, all of that. And that's one thing I have to work on. So see, we're, there's, we're all a work in progress, you know, because uh, I drink, you know, Diet Cokes and I, I know better. I know they're not good for me. Shame on you. Yeah, shame on me. <laughs> and another day, thing too <laughs> about oils is olive oil. I mean, that is so good for you, but people don't realize in moderation, you can't get a salad and pour olive oil because it's, it's very fattening, but it's good for you, but not to cook with. Mm. Oh, it's, yeah. yeah I no. cook with it. I no. cook with it, too. No, you're not supposed to cook. I mean, yeah. you may be very, very low, but once it starts heating up, it loses so the its... Breaks point. it down. Sure. Right. It, it loses, not even the smoking point, just... Before. It loses yeah. all of the nutrients, and it's not even good for you anymore. Is that mm -hmm. right? Rita, real quick, what about when we all, on the weekend, everybody goes out? I mean, there's, there's, there's I guess, uh, 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 smarter things or, or things that are good for the youth mm -hmm. that are on the menu, like even at your... At, at at the uh, uh, the Mexican restaurant down the street. Mm -hmm. I know when we go, you know, um, a lot of times in the evening, me and Pat will <clears> order <throat> a, 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 the grilled chicken. Mm -hmm. You that's know, and you get with your with with your frijoles a la chara and and that's your appetizer. <laughs> yeah, let me. No, that, that's jumping jazz. If you ever eat with jumping jazz, that man eats for two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, when you go out and eat, you you probably. Like, I don't eat things that I wouldn't normally eat at home, yeah. like a bunch of cheese all over it or anything like that. My mother and I went to eat today, and I had some caldo, and she, we both had caldo. And then I had a tortilla with some uh, avocado on it. That was delicious for me. It filled me. Yeah. And so you can still eat the things you want to eat, but in moderation. But, I mean, oh, like man. cheese, that's why a lot of our Latinos are just so heavy. Cheese is, if you're going to eat cheese, they say to eat, like, you know the little cubes that they sell? Like three in one day. And we eat enchiladas, what does it have, like 12 and one enchilada? You know, so yeah. we just have to be careful and just start cutting back, just cutting back. But you can't deprive yourself. You, you, sometimes you're going to, when you go to your grandparents or... I tell you, man, just hit, hit that salad at lunchtime. <laughs> but you can't eat salad all the time either. Then you'll get That's right. burned. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. you get a little mo mo moderation at dinner. And if you yeah. haven't bought a uh, juicer versus a, what's the other one, uh, like Bullet. a blender, uh -huh. like a blender, I would recommend those that are interested considering that to buy a blender because what happens with the juicer is you get the juice, you, you're you getting the juice, but all the pulp is going out and that pulp is essential for you to, to clean your intestine mm -hmm. your, and everything. So. Hate to cut you off, but we've run out of time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back next week. We're live television, by the way, at 6 p.m. every Monday night. We'll see you next week.